have won the Super Bowl. It's unbelievable. Just think where this club was just four short years ago. The wind is whipping out here right outside the Superdome. Major, major flooding. Five months after Hurricane Katrina and an entire season playing on the road, the New Orleans Saints were looking for a head coach, someone willing to move to a devastated region to lead a moribund franchise with a broken home. We all saw the effects of Hurricane Katrina. You know, how is this going to play out? Is the Superdome going to be able to be repaired? Is, is this team going to stay in New Orleans on a long-term basis? And really at a time when everyone was leaving was the idea that, hey, we might decide to go move there. Amidst the exodus, Sean Payton arrived, hired as the 14th head coach in Saints history. This is an exciting day for me and my family. Uh, I'd like to first thank Mr. Benson Rita for giving me this great opportunity uh, to coach a, a great organization. This may have been hard for Payton to say with a straight face. The Saints were one of the least successful franchises in all of sports. It's like having open heart surgery week after week after week without an aesthetic. We couldn't do diddly poo offensively. We couldn't make a first down. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We couldn't complete a pass. We sucked. But Sean Payton was not afraid of a challenge. As an assistant, he took the worst from Bill Parcells. What do you got? Anything? Give me a couple ideas. I don't need them to on the bus after the game. As a player, he was chewed out by Mike Ditka during the strike year of 1987. He was, I guess, the scab quarterback, <laughs> for lack of a better term. But uh, I know he, he ended up starting three games. One of those was against the Saints, when I think most of the Saints team had come back, at least the Saints defense. So I've seen clips of basically Sean just getting knocked around. Coincidentally, that was the year the Saints made the playoffs for the first time in their history. They intercepted their future head coach on his very last NFL pass. It helped me figure out that I wasn't going to be able to do it uh, for a living. Peyton wasn't an NFL quarterback, but he knew what one looked like. Here's Breeze, pump fake, and throw. Touchdown! How about that, Drew Brees, baby? Drew Brees was a free agent. But there was competition for his services and a more popular suitor in the Miami Dolphins. I think just from an outsider's perspective, the obvious choice uh, is Miami. One of the most storied organizations in the history of the NFL it was on the up and up, living in South Florida. You know, it just doesn't get much better than that, right? Peyton's pitch would have to be good. I was going to take Drew and Brittany to a couple places that they might want to live. Sean wanted to show my wife and I that New Orleans was coming back, that there were plenty of places to live and to raise a family. All that went fine, but on the way back, I took the wrong turn and we ended up, I can't tell you where we ended up, really. All of a sudden, the neighborhood kind of turns into one where you've got a car in a living room. You've got another house that is off its foundation. You've got a boat that's flipped over on somebody's roof. I remember feeling like I just ought to drive this guy right to Miami right now. I mean, it, it, was, it was awful. But I think what he didn't realize was Brittany and I were looking into the deeper meaning of it all. I felt like this is where I belong, to be a part of not only the rebuilding of an organization, but also a city and a region. The arrival of Drew Brees, along with Peyton, gave the team hope, something the Saints hadn't had in a long time. right there, 93. You got him down. You think you're worth 15 yards? No, I'm not. No, you're not. In his first year in New Orleans, Sean Payton was relentless and demanding. He needed to be. The Saints had won only one playoff game in 38 years. You gotta compete out here now. You're just conceding some throws. I'm watching the whole time, the whole drive. 
Hey, the whole drive, I'm watching it, Joe. You tell me I'm wrong. Drew Brees was one of the few players who needed no prodding. The very first bye week we had in 06, the players had been given off that weekend. And I was walking to the car and I looked, and on the field is this guy in shorts and a t-shirt and he has a ball. Then I see that it's Brees and he's kind of dropping back and going through the motions of playing the position. And I walk out there and I said, what are you doing? He said, hey, I'm just trying to simulate the game that I would be playing today. So I'm, I'm staying on, on the routine. And I looked at him, you know, Sunday afternoon, about two o'clock, and I said, well, who's winning? <laughs> and he says, we're winning. I said, well, that's good. And he was out there for another hour and a half. Well, if I could have maybe just thrown, put it on him right now, it's a touchdown. We knew he was driven. And when you're able to hear him in the huddle, not only give the play, but coach up the halfback. You ready to look hot for me flat? And alert the tight end. Uh, Billy, over here, fix right, don't fix right and possibly a receiver on every play. Get on, Lance, get on, get on, okay. He certainly is an extension. Be decisive, okay? Either you're running and you're outrunning him now, or you're putting your foot in the ground and you're coming, okay? Right. You make that determination and make it quick, All right. okay? Three games into the 2006 season, the Superdome reopened for the first time since Hurricane Katrina. 68,000 fans, 68,000 emotions. From that first block punt by Steve Gleason to the recovery in the end zone. I've never to this day heard the Superdome louder than that moment. Oh, 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 baby! Just listen to this crowd! That's when you knew that no matter who we were playing that day, they didn't stand a chance. <laughs> Ice this game! Now we can do it in here! You guys got him right at the edge of the diving board! Push him off! Let's go! Bush is lined up to the right as a wide receiver. They give it to him on an end around. He gives it to Devery Henderson. Oh. Reverse. And Henderson's to the goal line. And he is in. It was magical. You could feel what that game meant and what it symbolized. New Orleans was coming back. We could have gone eight quarters, nine quarters, ten quarters. That wasn't changing tonight. This game ball is going to everybody in this city. This city is getting yeah. this game ball from our organization, this team. This game ball is going to the city of New Orleans. In 2006, Peyton's first year as head coach, he led New Orleans to the doorstep of the Super Bowl. It would take the Saints three years to find a way through. In three out of four years under Sean Payton, the Saints had the number one offense in the NFL. The defense has come along more slowly. Hey, inside, we need some push. Ready? In 2008, Ready? they traded for linebacker Jonathan Groman, a pro bowler for the Jets, and a friend to all Muppets. Woo! What was your favorite subject in school? Lunch. Ah, he got me there. That's a good one. <laughs> All right, calm down. Like Drew Brees, Vilma is undersized for his position, but he's quick to the ball. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. They have press strong first play. Alert. Went to press weak. Okay. All right. So no, it's coming to you. Yeah. Hey, coming back here. We're not coming back here. I think Vilma is one of the more intelligent football players in this league. Ooh, almost got that ball. And I saw a marked difference in our defense immediately just because of his leadership ability. Remember now, I'm gonna blitz that A gap. The back comes to you, take him. The defense improved, but not in the category that mattered most to the head coach. How many turnovers we have right now? Show. Somebody be a ball out hero. I want to yeah, tackle, yeah, but somebody yeah. be a ball out hero. Bang! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, so in 2009, good, Peyton yeah. hired defensive coordinator Greg Williams, a coach who shared his philosophy of attack. 
Greg brought an attitude that he was going to instill in his players, just emphasizing each snap is an opportunity to take the ball away. Hey, we knocked the ball out and it's free. Knock it out. He likes to go outside the box. Everyone knows that. So uh, he started showing some nature videos. He had the alligators, cheetah, lions going after zebras and gazelles. He said, you see that? That's just aggression. That, that's all it is. Anybody can make a tackle. Anybody can make a sack. But who are the ones that can get that ball out when you're making a tackle? Who are the ones that can strip the ball out of the quarterback when you're getting the sack? You know, those are game-changing plays. They got it! They cover it up for the touchdown! You're the predator. Go out there and hunt. Go get him. Go get him. At the beginning of the 2009 season, the defense went on the attack. The ball hawk was free agent Darren Sharper, number 42. And it's intercepted. This is Sharper. Back to the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, 35, 40. Look at the veteran go. Midfield. He gone. He gone. He gone. 97 yards on the touchdown return by Darren Sharper. In Philly, you know, Sharper came up with a big interception. He had the one the week against the Jets. Sanchez throws an interception to Sharper. Sharper with a convoy out in front. He'll go the distance. It got to the point where if he didn't get an interception in the game, you thought that was an aberration. Hey, who that? Who that? The same old Saints I know. I've been known to growing up, man. Same old Saints. Ain't nothing different. For most of their history, nothing seemed to go right for the Saints. Now they were getting all the bounces. The one-time lovable losers suddenly couldn't lose. What an effort by the New Orleans Saints. Still undefeated, still have not trailed through five games. The start that we had just really blowing people out, you know, scoring almost 40 points a game, the way the defense was playing. But you always kind of wait for that time when you're going to be tested. Starting off at Miami, we get down 24 to 3 in the second quarter. Very easily could have just threw in the towel and said, hey, today's not our day. The old Saints would have. On a fourth and goal near the end of the first half, the man who played his college ball in Indiana had his Hoosiers moment. We needed a touchdown. I'm looking at Sean, and I just said, Coach, I'll get it. Uh, it's on the six-inch line. I can sneak it and jump over the top or whatever you want. Sean trusted me with that, and uh, I let the offensive lineman know that <laughs> there was no other option. we got to score a touchdown. And it's going to be Drew Brees who goes up over and in. Drew Brees goes airborne. A roll of the dice, a gamble won. It seemed small at the time, but it was a sign of things to come and it sparked a second half comeback in Miami. This is a football team that faced a 21 point deficit. Whatever questions this team had not answered before today, they have answered them in very positive fashion. Here we are in Miami. We know it's the host Super Bowl city and the NFC was gonna be the visiting team that year. So that would be the locker room that we'd be in if we came back. And I remember us all looking around as we're celebrating that big comeback victory. Sean Payton just saying, hey guys, remember this feeling because we plan on being back here feeling the same way. We got to be special. We got to smell greatness. And we got to finish strong. Let's go from the top. One, two, three, two, three, four, five, six, 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 seven, eight, 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 the Saints kept winning, pushing their record to 10 and 0. And the man they called Breezes established himself as the most accurate quarterback in the NFL. Beach him in stride, down to the five, into the end zone, touchdown! Beautifully thrown ball by Drew Brees. In 2009, Brees completed an NFL record 70.6% of his passes. Apparently, that kind of efficiency has to be studied to be believed. Testing diapers on the football field? That's a first. That's right. With one of the most accurate quarterbacks of all time. Can he really hit a size 5 diaper from 30 yards? Let's see what kind of impact these diapers can withstand. 
I'm throwing footballs at diapers. <laughs> oh, oh man, yeah. amazing! And I don't do that uh, all too often, but uh, that was a unique opportunity to do something with my son, Balin, being on a Pampers Cruisers with Drymax commercial with his daddy. We YouTube that uh, in the linebacker room one day, and it was impressive to watch. I mean, he was he was on. Thank God he's on our team. <laughs> that was good. Where's that? Bree stayed dry and calm in any situation. A nice counterbalance to the head coach. I tell you what, everything you see as far as practice, his calm demeanor, that just goes all out the window on game day. Hey, you gotta get your ass in the game, you! He's a maniac and I stay away from him. What kind of shoes you got on? Yeah, that thick figures. Put on the cleats. Sean is not afraid to light you up on the sideline. Hey, that isn't all right. It's not all right. All right, all right, all right. I want it high and tight. I'm telling you, if he could put pads on and go out there and play, he would. He's, He's a fiery guy. Now. Let's go. Let's go. Right, Let's go. Right, Let's go. I mean, he loves competition, loves it. And he's just expecting the best out of everybody, you know, expecting perfection. Still undefeated in week 12, the Saints face their toughest test, the New England Patriots on Monday Night Football. When we came here in 06, New England was the team. It was team first, it was good quarterback play, it was a solid plan by the coaches, and we began to try to emulate that. Let's go now, fellas, just do your job. Now listen, man, let's just go one series at a time and just do our job. And so, you know, here it was four years later on a Monday night game, we're playing that team. I hope you can tell how loud this place is. Let's go, Pete, start fast, start fast. On this night, the Saints proved to be a better version of the Patriots. Yeah, we gotta make some yards on it. Get Vilma. We block Vilma, we make yards. We cut him loose, we're not gaining anything. I might just stay dangerous to the two receiver side. That's what I did right That's there. That's fine. Hey, wherever you set it, we play it. Hot 911. Alert to check down. Bill man the defense, employed a strategy that would serve them well in the playoffs. Hit the Hall of Fame quarterback. And the carnage continues. Saints fans are loving every single second of it. Drew Brees outplayed Tom Brady, throwing five touchdowns to five different receivers. Brees going to throw down the seat. Wide open, Devery Henderson. Nobody's within 20 yards of him. He can do the backstroke into the end zone from there, and he'll take it in for a touchdown strike. For us to go out there and really just dominate that team, we thought, okay, well, we got something here. Good day. Great day. Coach Belichick came up to me after the game and said, uh, he's so glad I'm out the division because <laughs> he doesn't want to face me twice a year. And to personally single me out, to tell me that, that's real flattering. The Saints played their best against the Patriots, but they finished the year at their worst. Their undefeated season ended against the Dallas Cowboys. They went on to lose to both the Panthers and Buccaneers. Losing to Dallas was one thing, but having the lead we had against Tampa at home with a 17-point lead and then losing that game. Hartley has it on its way, and no, he missed it wide to the left. It was the one time when we kind of had our mini crisis. Quit sulking! Yes, you are. Get the look off your face and have some nuts. It wasn't just Garrett's missed kick. It was kind of an important gut check for all of us because this was happening right before the beginning of the playoffs. No team had ever lost their last three regular season games and gone on to win the Super Bowl. And those kind of misses can destroy a kicker's confidence. As a young kicker, you're going to miss one like that. You're going to feel like you let everybody down, and it's going to be devastating. But you find out a lot about a guy when something like that happens to him. You know, adversity really shapes you. And it's very ironic that he would have that almost the exact same kick in a much bigger situation about a month later in the NFC Championship game.
of celebrities here today. Brad Pitt is here, Spike Lee. You're all in town to see this one. The Saints hadn't won in a month, but they had home field advantage throughout the playoffs and some extra lumber to see them through. The theme for us was to bring the wood. Bring the wood. Well, we know we just have to be the most physical team no matter what, especially after we had lost the last three games of the season. Reggie Bush took the theme quite literally. From a coach's perspective, the last thing you want to see is one of your players running out of the locker room holding the bat in the air. I remember turning to him saying, hey, you carried that bat out here now. You better play well. Fortunately for us, he backed it up. Here's a run left side. It's Reggie Bush breaking free. Bush to the 30, 25, 20. Bye-bye, birdies. A 46-yard touchdown gallop by Reggie Bush. Great job. We were prepared for that game. You know, scoring 35 points in the first half. Just felt like every time we touched the ball, we were going to score a touchdown. Pitch back. Flea flicker. Right freeze. Open. Loads and locks it and throws it downfield. And it is caught. Caught by Henderson at the goal line for the touchdown. The Saints took a commanding lead. The defense made sure it would stick. Saints showing blitz. Coming off the corner. Warner. Up and throws it, and it's intercepted. Will Smith, and there is a player shaken up, and that is Kirk Warner. To his credit, Warner was coming up and trying to make a tackle. That was uh, whew. Will Smith made a tremendous play, and I'm ready to run to go lead block him. And all of a sudden, I see Bobby McCray coming on the B line for Kurt Warner, and. I could hear that one running, and I was like, oh, God, he got hit. Hey, he, he became a defender. Got to defend yourself. Obviously, he brought the wood, and that really just set the tone. Warner returned, but the Saints rolled to a 45-14 to victory. Ah, my God. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. We are so proud of you guys. You go through the bye week and all this bull about being rusty so much for the rust. To have success in the NFC Championship, the Saints would have to get after Brett Favre, just as they had Kurt Warner. This is, I would say, the biggest sporting event in the history of New Orleans. You know, we were both undefeated for a while. And then even after that, you know, there was a stretch where, hey, we're 12 and 0 and they're 11 and 1. So as the season went on, it was almost like we knew how this thing was going to play out. We're going to play the Vikings in the NFC Championship game. And may the best team win. In a matchup of season in the making, both teams started strong. First, Adrian Peterson was a concern, and then he started fumbling. Handoff goes to Adrian Peterson, and he dropped it again. Adrian fumbled. Once he had those fumbling issues, now it's back on, the onus is back on Brett Favre. They're going to come back to that play action now. Let's hit this guy. He's throwing off his back foot across his body. He gets hit countless times, gets right back up. Brett Favre was just creamed by Darren Sharper. How the hell did they hit the quarterback? They hope that this pressure later on in the game is going to get the Favre and he's going to get inaccurate. This guy's going to make a mistake now, I promise you. Fortunately, we knew that Brett Favre would eventually do uh, what he does. He's a gunslinger, so he's going to try to fit him into tight spots. He's going to try to squeeze him in there. Favre pumps, delivers, and it is intercepted. It's Vilma back on his feet to the 31-yard line. And Favre is shaken up. Is down. Brett Favre clearly was destroyed after the play. Definitely wasn't intentional to, to high loan. We don't play that way, but it worked. He was hurting. He was hurting bad. Favre is out of the game. Favre is done. Hey, Favre is done. Favre didn't miss a series. The game was tied at 21. Coach Payton needed a new piece of gum. I need a piece of juicy fruit. You know, I'm not very superstitious. It's the only one, for whatever reason, 
Five pieces of juicy fruit in the first half, five in the second half, two packs total. If we're not doing well, well, we'll get another piece in there, and if we're doing well, we might just grind on that piece a whole half. Unless, of course, it's the wrong type of gum. Can you get me juicy fruit? Not spearmint? <laughs> I have seen him getting on one of our equipment managers or something for, you know, giving him the wrong flavor of gum. Tell Bum I want juicy fruit. I think the spearmints and all those other ones have just been uh, not, not quite as consistent as juicy fruit. That's our piece. Listen, whatever works for Coach, whatever gets the competitive juices flowing, so to speak. In the huddle. Drew, pay attention here. You like this call? Ready, 380, ready, set. Breeze in the shotgun. Looks over the middle, steps up, can't find anybody. Rolls to his right, looks around, throws to the yeah. one-yard line. Touchdown! Yes! Yes! An eruption of volcanic proportions here in the Louisiana Superdome. The Vikings tied the game at 28 and the ball was in Brett Favre's hands with a chance to win it at the end of regulation. Little by little, the Vikings are driving, and you knew they needed one more completion to get into field goal range. You know, offensively, I'm just thinking, just get us back on the field. Just give us another chance. They had preached takeaways all season and never needed one more than this moment. So now it would be a 55-yard field goal if the Vikings are able to go no farther. Favre, half roll out to the right, has all sorts of time. Throws it, and it's intercepted! This is Tracy Porter! He's coming back with it to the 40, and taken down at the same 47-yard line. As we will go to overtime, it's 28-all. I'm going to mix it up. Let's go win this game. Come on! Let's go! So it comes down to this. Garrett Hartley with a chance to be the biggest hero in recent Saints memory. The irony is we're right back in the same location as we were versus Tampa Bay a few weeks ago where he had missed. So you just want to deliver confidence. The protection's been great all day with these guys. I'm just talking about up front. And there were these Florida Lees sitting all around the stadium. There's one right between the uprights. I remember just telling him, look, why don't you try to hit this effing Florida Lee here right in the middle? You just groove this thing. I don't want you thinking about anything but hitting that Florida Lee. I'll carry in. Just hit your kick, though, son. Here's why. You deserve to be here. This will be a 40-yard field goal attempt right hash mark. Let's go to the Super Bowl, boys, right here. Come on, baby. One time for your boy. with that is that the podium can can only handle about eight or nine people. Other players give me, in the front. Give me Vilma and we're good. I want Vilma. We're fine. We got plenty of room. I want Vilma. That's all. Come on. Get up here. Can't say no to coach. So <laughs> I go up there and uh, you know he tells me you know we couldn't have done this without you and you know that that really made me feel special because you have a head coach, an offensive coach that really has this much respect for you. No way you're not going to be up here. Oh, I appreciate it. No way. I appreciate it, Sean. We got one more still. We still. We got a Outside the Superdome, they were literally dancing in the streets. 
Nobody's going to bed tonight. Sleep is so overrated. This is for everybody in this city. This stadium used to have holes in it. It used to be wet. It's not wet anymore. This is for the city of New Orleans. The postseason blueprint for the Saints' defense was working. They got to Kurt Warner. They got to Brett Favre. Could they get to Peyton Manning, the league MVP? Greg Williams certainly thought so. You know, the big thing is is that he throws the ball so early that uh, we're going to have to do a good job of, of finding ways to get to him. And then when we do get to him, then we're going to make sure we have a couple of remember me shots when we get there. <laughs> You know, we're on the players about not giving the uh, opponent any anything to write about. You know, and here it is, the defensive coordinator gets quoted. So Tuesday morning at the Super Bowl is media day. And I had one of the waiters bring over at breakfast two glasses, two jars of peanut butter, uh, crackers, and some sand for Greg to dine on before we went to media day. I think he got the message. <laughs> the Colts were favored by a touchdown. That week, Sean Payton sought advice from mentor Bill Parcells. Their conversation sparked an idea for what would become the greatest gamble in Super Bowl history, codename Ambush. We felt we needed to gain a possession somehow. You know, Bill's someone I'm close with, and he drew some comparisons to the championship game in 1990. They had run a fake punt against the 49ers late in the game. Oh, a fake. It's going to be a fake. They run across the 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, down to the 25 yard. Giants won in an upset. So the idea of stealing a possession you know, started really with a fake punt. We just couldn't find the look that we wanted. So we went the route of the onside kick. We started practicing it, and uh, Morissette was hitting the ball on point, on the money every time. And then sure enough, uh, he tells us we're going to run it in the Super Bowl. Sean Payton came into the meeting and said, it's not a matter of if we're going to run this, it's when. That one still has confidence in you, and it's still confidence in that kickoff team because they knew it was coming. And ambush not working was not an option. <laughs> ambush had to work. We were going to make sure it did. All right, Michael. I want you to bunch again. A huh? Bunch onside kick. Just a surprise. Just, you know, it's a ambush. Right, right to left. We're going to line up and all of a sudden just kick one. Sideways. Down the middle? No, sideways. Yeah. It's an easy one. Get and get and Peyton's. We're ready. At the Super Bowl, when you see Spike Lee and then you see Queen Latif and Carrie Underwood. Carrie! It's one after another of, of people that are very successful. And they're all watching. I got a pee. It was the most watched television event in American history. This is what we have been waiting for. Two number one seeds matching up for the first time in 17 years. All season long, we've been special. Right. All season long, we smell right here. Let's go. Tonight, it's time to finish strong and hold up this trophy for our city. Manning in the shotgun. Sets, throws into the end zone. Garcon, touchdown. Indianapolis went down and scored on their first two possessions, you know. All of a sudden it's 10 nothing, and we're trying to regroup. I'm thinking base inferno. I don't know how you like that. That's fine, coach. You love it? I love it. All right. Late in the second quarter, the Saints gambled on a fourth and goal and lost. Hands it off Pierre Thomas. Thomas is going to be taken down for a loss of about a yard on the play. They trailed 10 to 6. Peyton still had ambush up his sleeve. And more importantly, the guts to call it. Coming off the field at halftime, you know, you've got 35 minutes here of the who. And somewhere between Teenage Wasteland and Pinball Wizard, we decided that this was going to be the time to run this. A lot of good things in the first half. Hey, pay attention now. One quick thing. We're going to start this half kicking off. All right, ambush. You recover it, right? I don't want this thing going out of bounds. Now listen, man. Let's go get this 
game. Let's go get this game. Coming back on the field, I recognized that this ball was going to be kicked on the Colts bench, and that would have been a big mistake. Quickly, I had a chance to just tell the officials, hey, we want to go right to left, not left to right. Let's do this. Let's go this way. I want to go this way. I want to go this way. Yeah. So the Saints will kick it away, trailing 10-6. Thomas Morstead steps into the football, and it's an onside kick. And it's going to be covered up by Chris Reese, I believe. They're still fighting for it. No indication as yet. We got it. We got it. We got it. Still a battle down there. Still a scrum as players are separated. You get out of here. You get out of here. You get out of here. Right ball. Right ball. You got it. The officials have made no declaration yet. Hey, we got the ball. The fact that it was taking place on our sideline, that was big. So many guys, you know, Saints ball, Saints ball. New Orleans still claiming they've got it. And I think they're right. Right ball. Hell yeah. Good ball. Hey, take over the game right now. Take over the game. I want the gas pedal down. Breeze sets up the screen. Pierre Thomas. Thomas still on his feet. Down to the five. Makes the move. He's going to score. 16 yards. And Pierre Thomas puts the Saints in the end zone. The Saints cash in on the gamble, and this game has swung to the New Orleans Saints. The Colts answered. They had the league MVP. New Orleans had breezes, and he was perfect on a drive that put the Saints on top with 5.42 to play. And Breeze spreading that ball all over the field. Eight different receivers. He is in a groove right now. 28 for 35, man. Pretty big. It to Shockey here. Very wide open. Breeze. Here's the throw to Shockey, and it's a touchdown. The Saints are back in the lead. Hey, Trace, let's finish. Let's finish the game, man. Let's finish it. Let's go. It's what we live for. Let's go now. Let's go. Sack fumble. Sack fumble. All right. You know how to play this thing. I want him to throw it. I want to hit him. Now it's going to take a touchdown. But, again, we got Peyton Manning. I've seen Peyton Manning do it a thousand times. They're going down the field, they're going to score a touchdown, and then we're going to have to go down, kick a field goal, and win this game. That's the way it's going to happen. Get with Bum, I want a piece of juicy fruit. I got me. We need to get some pressure on this guy. Tracy, watch the shot. Two receivers to the left, Johnson to the right. Manning in the shotgun puts Collie in motion. Looks in his direction. It's picked off. It's picked off. It's Tracy Porter again. He's running free. He's going to go all the way. Hand up stretch. It is a safe touchdown. 70 yards on the return. 70 yards on the return by Porter. He did it to Barb, and now he's done it to Manning. Tracy Porter knew that route was coming and jumped in. Peyton Manning threw it right to him. Wow. so sure it isn't the Superdome all over again. The miracle in Miami has happened. The Saints have won the Super Bowl. What an incredible job Sean Payton has done. Coach of the year in 2006, runner-up this year, and now the coach of a Super Bowl champion. Some of the gutsiest Super Bowls by any coach ever. Marcel said it. You gotta have, you gotta have balls That's to win this game. Balls, I'm telling you. <laughs> you set the record. Hey! <laughs> How about it, coach? Oh. I love it. 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 You won the Super Bowl. Did. You won a Super Bowl. Oh. So did you. And me. Oh. It's unbelievable, huh? Take in the moment, right? It's awesome. This time, Jonathan Vilma didn't make the podium but he got what he came for. <laughs> you can already feel that's how I feel right now, just thinking about it. And I was like, man, you know what? I just won a Super Bowl. It's an amazing feeling. To hold my son and just tell him how much I love him, 
even though he had the headphones on so he couldn't hear me. But as we watched the confetti come down, I'm telling him, we did it, little boy, we did it. I can't wait to tell him when he gets old enough what that experience meant to his dad. The Saints as underdogs, which they've been their entire franchise history, able to come through tonight with a valiant effort. It's unbelievable. Just think where this club was just four short years ago. Everybody back in New Orleans gets a piece of this trophy. Here we go. Looking out at the fans and just seeing the tears in everybody's eyes, you recognize immediately how much that meant to so many people. I'm so happy we were able to get that to him. After 42 years, Sean Payton helped bring the Lombardi Trophy to New Orleans for the first time. We're going to have some fun tonight now, brother. <laughs> you kidding me? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Is it true you slept with a trophy that night? It's true. We were at the post-game party in our hotel celebrating, and it was about 5 in the morning, I think, that you know I made, made my way back up to the room and just laid it down on the bed, looked at it for a second, and then went to sleep. I saw Mike Tomlin at the NFL Scouting Combine two months later, and he reminded me that uh, he had slept with Tiffany a year before, so trophy gets around. It's pretty cool to wake up to, though. The euphoria lasted for weeks. Nearly a million people showed up for the victory parade in downtown New Orleans, where a team and its fans celebrated the rebirth of a city. As soon as they turn the corner on Poitras Street and the Superdome is on the right, you look out and you see just a sea of people. You knew it was more than just us winning a game. All of New Orleans won this. You know, you could just feel the sheer emotion. This was something that a lot of people probably thought they would never see. If we, as a team and as a city, can be world champions, when nobody ever thought we could, then and we can accomplish anything. We can come back from anything. It's something that will link us together forever. When a saint on my when a saint go on my Lord, I want to be in there now. When a saint. Go, my genie. 